New York versus Washington, D.C. A complete comparison. So, New York and Washington, D.C. Two of the biggest and most exciting cities in the U.S. But which one's better? Well, we're pretty familiar with these soaring skyscrapers of New York City, but we're also familiar to the seat of government in Washington, D.C. Let's be practical. Those aren't everything that both these massive cities have to offer. Often called the city that never sleeps, New York City offers non-stop dining, world-class shopping, and dazzling urban sites. As the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., however, is home to some of the country's most iconic monuments and museums. So, which city is better among the two, and how do we even compare both cities, and on what basis? Well, we've got you covered, since we'll be delivering to you a complete comprehensive comparison based on six main criterions, which are demographics, quality of living, environment, leisure, transportation, and general information. Under those criterions, there will be subtopics, and based on that, we'll be comparing both cities side by side. So, now we're clear with that, let's jump straight into the comparisons, starting with the first criteria, which is demographics. Under demographics, the first subtopic to consider is population density. New York has a population density of 10,194 people per square kilometer, while in the case of Washington, D.C., its population density is 3,886 people per square kilometer. So it's clear that New York City definitely has a much bigger population. Next, we have the median age of population. And on that front, New York has a comparatively older population, as the median age of 35.5 years to 33.9 years for D.C. Moving on, we come to total population. And even when we come to that, New York City undoubtedly has a larger population. While the latest figures suggest the numbers to be around 8.5 million, while Washington, on the other hand, has a mere 0.62 million, or 620,000, residents. As for the annual population growth rate, New York's growth rate is steadier at 0.9% than D.C.'s at 2.7%. Another thing to be considered under the demographics is that New York has a female population of 52.51% and a male population of 47.49%, while the female population figures for D.C. is 52.7% and that of the males is 47.3%, about the same there. Now, coming to the last subtopic and the deals with the single population. Well. If you're visiting any new city, this information may come in handy for most, especially for you singles out there. Talking about single figures, New York's 65% of its population is single, while Washington's figures is at 77.3%. Okay, so that was the demographics. Now let's move on to the second criteria of the comparison, which is quality of living. So under quality of living, the very first topic to be considered is public health care, since even the saying says, health is wealth. And talking about health services, New York City has a well-established public health care system, while well, Washington completely misses out on it. After health, the next important aspect is definitely the money factor. When it comes to money, we're talking average salary. And according to the latest figures, New York's average salary is about $4,370.90 per month, while that of D.C. is $4,155 per month. So, New York City has the slight edge here. The next important thing to consider is the gross domestic product. Now, this is where New York simply blows away the competition, with a massive GDP of $1,280,000,000,000. In comparison, Washington's GDP is a mere $103,300,000,000, which is not a small figure by any means, but pales in front of the competition. Now, we've seen earlier that New York City has a population far too large when compared to D.C., but you'd be amazed to find out that the unemployment in New York City is lower than that of Washington, despite that large population. Now, these are pre-pandemic figures, so obviously things are different right now, but New York City had an unemployment rate of a meager 4.3%, while that of D.C.'s is 6.1%. Now, let's talk taxes. We know taxes are necessary, however, if taxes are too high, then it can become troublesome. So when it comes to value-added taxes, New York with a VAT of 8.8% is much more favorable to Washington's 10% VAT. Also, let's talk about education too, shall we? And here's where New York City shines since New York City public school system is the largest in the United States. 
more than 1.1 million students are taught in more than 1,700 public schools with a budget of nearly $25 billion. The public school system is managed by the New York City Department of Education. It includes empowerment schools. In comparison, Washington, D.C. has a mere 111 schools. But given their lower population, that number seems like a fair deal. Let's jump on to the final topic under quality of living. Let's talk about the number of universities. Now this is where D.C. pulls ahead, with a total of 24 universities over New York City's 18. Moving on to the third criteria, that's environment. So under environment, the first thing to consider is the average maximum temperature. New York City has an average maximum temperature of 62.8 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 17.1 degrees Celsius. While in DC, the maximum is 66.7 degrees Fahrenheit, or 19.3 degrees Celsius. Next up, we have the average minimum temperature. And on that front, New York City has a 47.8 degree Fahrenheit, or 8.8 degrees Celsius, while the average minimum temperature in DC is 49.6 degrees or 9.8 degrees Celsius. Now we all know that nicotine is harmful and the ill effects of passive smoking have been studied time and time again. Public smoking is an issue many people have raised around the world and across the US as well. And so you'll be glad to know that New York City has a smoking ban in public places. However, that's not the case in DC. Finally, we come to the most important topic of comparison under environment and that is the level of air pollution or air quality index. New York has a poorer air quality index at 58 in comparison to Washington where the level of air pollution is 33. So that's done. Next after environment we have leisure. Since we're talking leisure, let's first look under the number of museums in each city. When it comes to museums, New York offers more than DC as New York City has a total of 89 museums while Washington has 73. Another unique feature that New York has over DC is that it contains a UNESCO World Heritage Landmark as well. Now that we're talking about leisure, we can't forget about major sporting events. And for events like that, New York has three huge sports facilities, stadiums or arenas with 20,000 plus seats, while Washington DC has four of those. And how can we forget that New York is also host city to the Grand Slam? That in and of itself is enough to give it a major boost over DC. That should be enough about leisure. Now, let's move on to the fifth criteria, which is transportation. When it comes to transportation, the cost of the monthly public transport ticket is $113.50 cheaper in New York than DC. Since it's just $116.50 in New York, well, it's $230 in Washington. As for the number of airports, both New York and Washington have three airports each. Well, the average commuting time in New York City and DC is 45.5 and 33.9 minutes respectively and so with that we're finally nearing the end of this comparison because now we have the last but not the least criteria which is based on general information first up let's compare them on the basis of unique global cities index but wait what is the global cities index in the first place well the global cities index is unique in that it measures global engagement of cities across five dimensions Firstly, business activity. Secondly, human capital. Thirdly, information exchange. Fourthly, cultural experience. And lastly, political engagement. And when compared, New York has a far higher measurement with 6.35 when compared to DC's 3.2. That means under the Global Cities Index, New York scores almost double the score of Washington. Even when we consider the number of billionaires, New York simply a huge margin ahead with 103 billionaires, while DC has a measly 3 billionaires. And surely you know that New York has a stock exchange of its own, well, DC simply doesn't have one. Well, if you didn't know that, you do now. And if you thought that was all, well, then let me tell you one more thing. Some gambling is legal within the city of New York, but I guess you probably already knew that, and also the fact that it's actually illegal in DC to gamble within the city. So, folks, if you're ever planning to visit any of these cities to gamble, New York City is definitely where you should go. The only factor where the national capital has an advantage is here in the number of international organizations' headquarters, since Washington, D.C. has a total of eight such headquarters, while New York has just four. And with that, we've come to the end of this comparison. 
so there you have it now if all these numbers still didn't make much sense to you in order to draw out a clear winner then don't worry we've got you covered on that front as well we've done the math and according to the data we've compiled the outright winner is definitely the concrete jungle New York City I mean it's definitely one of the best cities in the world and New York City is even named the world's best city in the 2019 timeout index published by the global culture magazine we probably shouldn't also forget that New York City has without a doubt one of the coolest anthems as well in the Empire State of Mind by Jay-Z and Alicia Keys so that should count for something too not that it's an official anthem though with that we've come to the end of this comparison we hope that you enjoyed this video if you want to keep watching more videos like these don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon and until next time stay indoors and stay safe